Right. Yeah, the other cool thing too about what Paul had done with the samples is I think you're used to seeing, you know, whenever we see a piece of art, we look at it and say, oh my gosh, that's tomato red or that's golden green. And I think that we're so used to seeing the standard colors. You would look at some of the samples that were in that case and go, I have no idea how they made that color. But I think that it really made things unique because you didn't have the same colors that everybody else was using. Right. And, and it was almost like having, you know, maybe your bullseye palette quadrupled or, or mm. more just because yeah. you all of a sudden had every color you could imagine. Um, mm. that there was, was a period of time when Karen Tarlow put together a uh, custom frit blends and oh. he would mix two or three or four colors of frit. And I think it was generally medium frit to yeah. give you almost like a granite look. And some yeah. of them had a brown cast and some of them were a little green. And they were just things that she sort of made up on her own right. and, then, yeah. uh, and then published little recipes. And I don't know whatever happened to those, but then she also sold the jars of frit pre-made. Yeah. So that you could just get a pound of it instead of having to buy four pounds to mix. Um, and that went over really well at the studio for a while. And they were just beautiful and yeah. very, very oh, innovative man. and fun. It so, was, yeah, nice. Isn't the recipe for that on the fuse glass or I whatever it calls? They, I think they are, Cynthia, but I didn't want to say that without knowing for sure. Yeah, Karen actually just, uh, Karen Newberger also just wrote the same thing. She said she thinks the recipes are up on fuseglass.org. So, um, but yeah, they were fun. They were, in fact, being a jewelry artist, I would take those, those recipes, I guess, and you could make things that look like stone, you know, yes. because stone cabochons for jewelry can be fairly expensive. You know, you might make a cabochon that, or you might buy one that might be 75 to a hundred dollars. Oh. And you were getting actually some pretty darn good um, stone looking pieces out of these frit mixtures, but it was like a, a whole nother palette. It was amazing. So I think we were very lucky that they, uh, that, that we have kind of these scientific minds, I think, and, and everybody at Helios, but also Karen and Paul that just came up with the most random stuff. It was a blast. Mm. So, and I want to tell you about uh, something that I just learned about today. And this is a little booklet that is published by Tanya Viet at AAE Glass. Mm -hmm. And uh, the woman who showed it to me today said that she's had it forever and she paid something like $20 for it. But it's a, it's a little square paperback book of maybe 40 pages. And what, sh what she has done is to find stock photos, put these beautiful pictures and then tell you what the bullseye equivalents would be to match those colors. Wow. So it's a picture of a bowl of fruit. And then it tells you tomato red, chartreuse, brown, a little bit of black, a little bit of cream. So that you can look for color palettes mm. that are already pre-made and they have a feel for what they're going to look like when you put those colors together. It is so smart. And yeah, look on AAEs website because she's got all kinds of good stuff. I can't believe that I didn't know about this until today. Right? Oh, and what I know- Fabulous resource. Yeah, and you know, the other one too I might point out is um, if you ever stalk Kim Brill on Pinterest, is it Pinterest? It is. Oh, never. Oh, never. <laughs> you never do. If you You've happen to- to be kidding. <laughs> if you I know she would see me. <laughs> <laughs> I could have a life if Pinterest were to go away. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? I know. Um, but one one of her boards is is kind of photos that have these collections of colors and how they go together. And and this book from Tanya is exactly like that. Is it? Oh my yeah. god! But I have I'm one of those people that likes the tactile. I like having a book for art stuff. Yeah, everything yeah. else I like ebooks, but art stuff I want those books. Yeah. I'm, yeah. I want to catch him. It's so smart. I, I can't believe I didn't think to do it. <laughs> right? Yeah. And then, and I might also point out, I'm not promoting or anything, but um, I signed up for Richard Parrish's color class. Yay. At, right. So I, I have not taken a class from Richard, but he has two classes upcoming at Helios, 
One of them is the bar relief class. And then the other one is his color theory class coming up. And I know the um, color one is in December, I think fourth through the seventh. So um, I'll be coming back to Texas for that one. Yeah, I just posted. Yeah, I just took his class in Bozeman. Oh, is it good? It's amazing. Oh, my God. It is so good. I did the fear no color class. And I just put a little chat in. He had us reproducing prints. We brought prints in right. and color palettes using bull, bullseye and making color palettes. So, yeah. Oh, wow. That's cool. And then Stella just wrote a note over here that says Bullseye did 365 days of glass last year. People submitted photos and Bullseye picked the colors. Maybe, uh, it says oh. May coming from their Facebook. So Interesting. That's yeah. really cool. Interesting. Maybe she got them from the Facebook page. If you look in the, in the Facebook page of Bullseye you, last year, you can find them. They did one a day and people submitted the photos and they translated into both. Oh. See. Stella, do you know if that's the community Facebook page or the corporate Facebook page? Oh, the regular bullseye one, not all those private ones. I don't know if that helps. <laughs> Is it the one where people post work? Yes, and, and everything else. Okay. okay. Oh, wow. I think if you do search for 365 days or 365, Excellent. you might find it. Okay, I'm right, checking this, that is so good to know. I, in fact, I screen scraped them into a Word document somewhere. Nice I screen scrape. Whoa, <laughs> there's a term. <laughs> That's a new one for Why? me. <laughs> screen scrape. All right, so Kim, you ready for? Uh oh, yes. talk amongst yourselves while I, while I find it. I think I have to go turn the gas off on the fireplace too. I'm not, not sure if that like burns the house down. <laughs> Yeah, not quite know. sure how to use a fireplace. So let's see. Oh, and I love these. More good stuff. I love how Kim titles these because I'm such a slacker on this, but Kim said more good stuff from the Helio sample uh, cabinet. Let me share the screen. I don't have my, um, I don't have my big monitor with me. Not yet. And there it is. Okay. Tell me if that you guys can see this too when it happens. Everybody see yep. it? Perfect. Yep. yep. Sounds awesome. great. Perfect. Oh no. So first of all, is this going to be a downloadable PDF? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Cool. Thank well, you. Thank you. Yes. Yes, it can. I, I I can make it a PDF, and I can also make it a PowerPoint. Okay. Now, do we have permission to, to do that? No, but I'll get it. Okay. All right. <laughs> I don't know who to talk to. So <laughs> I, want, I want to thank Paul Tarlow for, for doing this, you know, because he had access to the materials and because he had his daughter working there. And I know she spent the better part of a summer putting quite a bit of this together. And it was so smart and so cool. useful. You guys, you guys have really just had... Um, an incredible guide and mentor and yes. brain went yes. with him. Yes. Now yes. you really have. It was, you know, some of us live close to bullseye, but right. You had something else. <laughs> yeah. You know, it, if you ever get a chance, you know, if, if he's teaching a class or anything like that, it's uh, to watch his mind at work is just, it's insane. Like, when we had Linda Ethier come down for a casting class and, you know, she made molds and then she was using rice to figure out the volume of the mold. And it's like, you see Paul disappear to the you know back of the studio. And then like a little bit later comes back and he's developed this thing out of pieces of glass and duct tape that can tell you the volume of glass or the volume of rice. It's just, his mind yeah. is just constantly... Wow. Yeah, um, doing stuff like that. And so we had to call it the Tarlo Ricerator because, you know, with each one of these, you have to come up with a name yeah. or, or the time they had the crank thing for combing glass in the kiln. Anyway, but uh, yeah, I think a lot of us have a lot, uh, a lot of, a lot of thanks for Paul for, uh, for kind of introducing us to this. Yeah. 
it's been a, a blessing. So anyway, Kim. So these are just streakies on edge, um, which was a revelation when I was first new to fusing that you could, th that you would want to put anything on edge to begin with. I mean, that kind of blew my mind. And then to find out that you got these amazing color variations with glasses that had very various colors in them. Mm. Um, that is gorgeous. I know, right? Do you have one that's a French vanilla with clear, Kim, on this one? I believe I do. Okay. I believe I do. Right. You ready for the next one? Yeah. Ah, oh, yes, yes, yes. So. I uh, know, right? Mm. So I would suggest if you have any of this lying around your studio, throw one of these together and stick it in a drawer. You know, it doesn't have to be this big, you know, just do an inch tall. Yeah. And, it's wide, and I think you would have a really good reference point for a lot of these colors. Right. Yeah. Well, and I know after I saw this one, the clear and French vanilla one, um, I was creating something that I wanted to look like a rug. I wanted it to look kind of like a, a tapestry. And mm -hmm. so I had used the clear and French vanilla. And mm -hmm. then at the very end, I made little tassels. Oh, with, I just took, you know, strips of French vanilla and then, you know, lined them up and then cut a strip of it. So it looked like that fringe at the end, uh, end of a rug. And oh, I, cool. I don't have a picture of it handy, but I'll, I'll post it up on Facebook. But, but it's so interesting because the inspiration with these pieces, you start thinking like, wow, that, that looks like a tapestry. That's, um, mm -hmm. You know something a little so tell me are these samples done just on edge or are they um on top of tecta they're just on edge kirsten okay. on top of okay yeah. okay cool yeah and i want to say that they were maybe quarter inch were they quarter inch strips yeah probably because i know i don't think they were damned i know a lot of times right. when i was doing the strip construction classes were three eight cents inch strips you I know they might have been three eighths cat my maybe yeah. Yeah. They might have been three eighths. You can see them kind of flop over a little bit too. I know. Uh -huh. um, mm -hmm. You know, because these are all the high side. Right. Right. Because if you only had the quarter inch strips, they're going to be more straight up and down, but, you know, just a little bit wider and you get that flop and you yeah. get almost a little more dimension. Yeah. So I like that. See, I'm feeling inspired again. I'm loving this. <laughs> I've got a bunch of streakies. I really do need to follow my own advice and make some of these. <laughs> hmm. I think the clear and the white together are really nice too. Yeah. It's almost wintry. Yeah. It you know, has yeah, kind of a delicate. Yeah. So. Yeah. And you so know, another thing that we had done as well was to sprinkle powder you know, to actually take a, a piece of clear and then sprinkle powders on it and then slice that up and stick it on it. Right, right. So if you didn't have the streakies that you, you know, the colors that you wanted, I've, we've also done that where you, you kind of make your own. Kind of make your own, yeah. Yeah, with powders and fritz and whatever, slice it up. And, and if you do this with coarse frit, you get those really cool kind of bumps. Mm -hmm. Those are cool, anyway. I digress. <laughs> Caribbean white? No. Um, that's probably a typo. Oh, okay. <laughs> you know, Caribbean, I think so, on the lower right. Yeah, and, and I returned the samples or I'd go grab one, but um, yeah, it's Caribbean and probably black. Black, yeah. Mistake. Oh, and look at that woodland ivory black. That would make a nice tree trunk. Yeah. You know, if you were trying to get some sort of a tree yeah. trunk back. So. Interesting. Mix it with some powder wafers. You got some trees. <laughs> oh, I should have proofread this stuff. Um, so the cranberry one is actually a little bit pinker than it shows here. You know, I shot this stuff with my iPhone and it's really hard to get accurate color. And then, you know, I didn't spend a lot of time on color correcting. And so the cranberry one is a little bit richer than it shows here. Mm. And then we have Karen Newberger's favorite, white with right. 
Oh, and Karen, there's a new pink in the big order that Christine and Gail bought. You need to check it out. So Kim, yes. I was at Bullseye two days ago and I said, what's this about a new pink? Uh-oh. He said, oh no. We've had fuchsia and what was the other one? Hot pink? Hot pink. They said, we've had those for quite a while. What? Okay, new to us? Maybe. <laughs> hot fuchsia and hot pink, I think is what they're called. Yeah. So anyway, according to my contact. Yeah. <laughs> better than mine. <laughs> but maybe it'll... You know, flurry a, a buying spree. So bring it on. Right? Oh, my goodness. I would say, can we, can, can we kidnap this contact, contact and bring him down to Austin? Sure. Yeah. As long as I come with her. Like, right? Yeah. Mm. Mm. That could be good. You know, the other thing, I'm looking at this Egyptian, too, since Egyptian reacts. You could have some fun with that one as well. Oh, yeah. You know, uh, reactions. That's pretty. Isn't that nice? Uh huh. You know, see, and I'm just looking at this thinking Christmas tree. To me, that almost looks like a Christmas tree. Mm -hmm. It's like, could you bend it? Was it just last week we did the, the ornaments and the Christmas things? Yes. It was so much it fun. like forever ago. <laughs> <laughs> Two weeks ago. So, oh yeah, I forgot about this. Ah. So this is super smart, right? Wait a minute. So he's full fusing this first, then soft fusing and tack. Are all three of these on one tile? Yes. Okay, then they had to have done a full fuse first. The soft fuse. So it's been fused three times. It's been fused three times. That's interesting. I've actually never seen this one. Yeah, it kind of hurts my brain. And because I'm always talking about enameling, it reminds me of another thing they do in enameling, which is a full fuse of enamel. And then they go back and they do a sugar firing. So it's, it's fired twice, but the second one leaves it with texture. So that's kind of what's going on here. Interesting. Yeah. Interesting. That is interesting. Now somebody who was really ambitious would do this with every single frick color that exists. Kim, are you volunteering? Just saying. No. No? I am not. <laughs> I'm seeing potential for autumn leaves in here with some greens and yellows and orange. So that's really cool. You know, I, th I think stuff like this comes in really handy when you're talking to students who are learning from the ground up yeah. and don't understand what temperature over time can do to glass. Right. Yeah. Or would it hurt their brain? Because it hurt my brain, and I'm I'm right. We're a few years into it. <laughs> I think it would pump them up. <laughs> Sweet, let's get right on it. <laughs> All right. Oh, and you gotta love these. So, so these are the Fritz, where some of them um, leave marks, and others fire pretty flat color. Right. And, um, I know that I've had more than one surprise working with stuff like this. Now, another question too, Kim, are this, the fritz are on the top of the clear? Yes. yes. Oh, okay. Gotcha. Yes. You know, and I'm looking, I mean, just because we all know how much I love flowers. I'm looking at that salmon and yes. there's that red. See how there's variation in the red? Yes. Almost I think the salmon varies the most. Yeah. But what an amazing flower that would make. Uh huh. And of course, French vanilla, but even the dusty lilac. Yeah. You get that variation in there. And the adventurine, the very first one um, yeah. in the sun or in light really sparkles. And I just could not get a good picture of it. 
Right. Um, mm-hmm. but adventuring really does show the little pits and the divots mm-hmm. in a way that the other flat colors do not. Interesting. It just seems to be more dimensional. Yeah. And I couldn't get it on film. That is interesting. And see what, where I was asking if these were from the front or the back. So there's a technique in lamp working called implosions where they actually apply the dots on the back of the glass. And then when it melts flat, then it gives you dimension from the backside. So if you've ever seen those pendants that are glass that have like, looks like a flower that's coming in from the back of it. Mm-hmm. It's actually, that's, that's an implosion, but, but it, it would essentially be something like this with the frit, like when you just flipped it over mm-hmm. and see the frits on the back. Mm-hmm. That's also kind of gives you something interesting. But, oh, wow. Look at the pink. That's amazing. That is. You know, and I wonder if that varies by batch. Oh, surely it must. You know? It seems like it might. But, oh, okay. So. Hi, Amir. I'm on a Zoom call. <laughs> now what was oh now what was this so this was just to show new students what happens when you put color on color oh. and how some colors disappear gotcha she gets an interesting texture that is interesting. Wow. Kind of artful in its its own right. Seriously. You know, and then, oh, what, what is this? So this is big, small, and fine frit and powder. Right. And it's all black on these different strips. Right. When you can you see, really you see how black and blue. Firing? Was that, was that Kirsten? I think so. Okay. I think so, Kirsten. Okay. But you can really see how the black has blue in it. Yeah. So that is, is that, that stiff black, right? I'd have to look it up. I do <laughs> not know. Anybody? anybody? I do not know which black it is. So I'm working with, I think I mentioned this guy who does Murini and he, um, Working with him, we've noticed that stiff black really shows a blue cast to it. So I'm wondering, and I don't have my book here. You know what? This is the numbers at the top relate to the back piece. It's not the right. It's all the same black. Right. Wouldn't it be? I think it's all the same black. I'm just not sure which black it is. Mm. Got it. Okay. Which is a lesson in the fact that we should mark everything. <laughs> Hold on a second. Uh, let's see, 1100 glass bullseye. Um, anybody, anybody? There it is. Okay, so 1100, okay, there it is. So 1100 is the clear tecta. The clear tecta, the white, and then- Oh, it, interesting. Yeah. You and Daddy are going to have so much fun at the aquarium today. What? Are you a fish you see and you tell me tonight? Hold on one second. Hold on one second. I'm going to. Um, got it? There we go. Okay, it's muted. So let me go back to this one. Uh, there we go. Yeah, so then that's, this one is probably just showing how those different ones react with the different backgrounds. Yeah, because okay. they're, they're going to be stiffer, stiffer glass on the background that's going to act differently. These I love. I love these. So if you ever get a chance to take Linda Ethier's class, um, one of the things that you spend the first day or so working on uh, is creating a set of samples. And this is kind of a similar thing. And it sh- this one shows how the coarser the frit, 
you know, like you have coarse and then medium fine and powder, they're all clear, but you know, as the grains are finer, it gets cloudier. Mm -hmm. So if you were casting, there is a book, I want to say it's warm glass, if I'm not mistaken. It's a really big, pretty book, but they had done a casting where they had done a gradation. They had used coarse, medium, fine, and powder all in the same casting. And it, it actually went from transparent to cloudy. Ooh. Mm. So, you know, they kind of mixed it. So it's just an even gradation. It's absolutely gorgeous. But, but one of the things like in Linda's classes, she'll experiment with the different, um, the different, I guess, mixes of, of uh, let's say fine and powders and, you know, medium and powders and whatever, and you'll get different effects, especially if you're doing something like pot de hair. So these are important. Then, oh, wait, let me step back to this one one more. The other thing too is a sample on here. If you were trying to cast and you needed something super, super clear, you can also get the glass in, what did they call them? Um, billets. billets. There's billets, but then there's also patties. So they had some, you used to be able to buy a bucket of patties from bullseye that were clear, but they have many fewer bubbles in it. Because whenever they grind the fritz, if it's got the powder on it, that dust on it is also what makes it a uh, cloudy. So if you were trying to get something a little clearer, you could also wash, uh, wash your fritz and wash it. Well, mostly your coarse fritz or your medium fritz. So anyway, Stephanie has washed her powder. Yes. We do that. If you've ever seen cloisonne enamel mm -hmm. where cloisonne just has a glow about it, they have to wash those enamels. So they grind them. They want the largest uh, granules possible and they wash them over and over again and then pour off all of that, that dust right. and wash it again, pour off the dust. Right. And then in the very last wash, they'll use distilled water just to make sure that there's nothing that can interfere with the uh, enamels. But um, washing enamels makes them clear. That's what gets you that jewel tone. Mm -hmm. so, anyway, volume control. I've always liked this one. <laughs> Me too. Me too. Especially for beginners, right? Right. And the one thing we all learned in the beginning at Helios, glass wants to be a quarter inch thick. Wasn't there a t-shirt for that? <laughs> Probably. Mm. <laughs> so um, we were talking about powders a minute ago. Um, if you're not familiar, there's a, a woman who is an artist who is supported by Bullseye. Her name is Judy Tualetstiwa, and she works out of Santa Fe, and, and she has a book, a beautiful hardback coffee table kind of book, and in it she has powder recipes. And I will look it up, and I will put it in the um, information when I post this stuff. Mm -hmm. But what she has done that's really interesting is instead of just, you know, putting a little bit of mint green with white to get a new color, she puts colors together that react. So she gets all kinds of wild things happening. Right. Just beautiful. Mm -hmm. Just beautiful, beautiful work. So I'll find, I'll find that and post a link. Good. Cool. Let's see. I think we have, oh, we had an empty one. All right, here we go. Ooh, strip samples. So here again, you can see what happens on edge. It's sort of, you know, similar with the frit, the ones that give you the most shading also give you the stripes. Those were good. Oh, and even on the greens too. Do we still have avocado? Is that one that's still around? Mm -hmm. You know, I'm not sure. I know that some of the I greens went away. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Are you looking it up, Kim? I'm writing myself a note so I remember <laughs> to do that. Ooh. 
And I love that citronelle. It almost looks like a streaky, mm -hmm. doesn't it? It really does. It, what it reminds me of is golden green. Yes. Which a lot of people don't like golden green, but. It's a I, great accent color. It really is. And plus the fact that the last big sheet of it I bought from uh, Karen at Helios, she would always write the names and like, she would write funny stuff with a marker on it. So like it would be red tomato and she'd write, it's a tomato and she'd like draw a tomato on it. But on, I bought golden green and she wrote baby poo. <laughs> it was like, ah. <laughs> but all the fun, all the fun of Helios. See, some of these don't have that as much striping. Exactly. But a good test. Exactly. I love the powder blue. That was, those little stripes are barely there. Right. But you know what it makes me think of is, is how, you know, if you're a painter, you try not to use the paint straight out of the uh, tube. Right. You mix it with something so that you get a little richness and a little variety. This is sort of the same thing. You get just a little tiny bit of texture to break it up. Mm. And I think, too, just on these, having these little pieces, I know when I've done strip classes at Helios, being able to take these out and see the colors together and right. even that texture, it really, I found that to be really, really helpful. Right. Right. Um, oh, 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 Opaline. Uh -huh. So I did a bunch of tests when we were doing the great fish mm. project because I was assigned the <laughs> jellyfish and I wanted to do them in Opaline so that they would have that real ethereal glow to them. Mm -hmm. But I really didn't have much experience with Opaline. So um, I started off just laying Opaline on top of a bunch of colors. Um, and that's what these are. The, the, this is just unadulterated opaline on top of these colors. That's beautiful. Aren't they lovely? Yeah. Oh, these are even pretty nice. And then I started putting powders on the lower layer. So marzipan is the base. And mm -hmm. then I put powders and I gradated the powders and fired opaline on top of that because I wanted some color variation, but I knew that with the opaline, I'd get exactly one chance. So right. it all had to fire together. Mm. So I wanted to see what could I do to get the opaline to look um, dimensional. Mm -hmm. And so I was playing with the powders. Oh, that looks great. Some of the violets all turned out sort of the same. That was a little surprising. Yeah, right. it is. But I heard somebody was trying to take a screenshot of the last one just as I was changing the slide. Oh, yeah. So if, if you wanted yeah, to take a, if you needed a screenshot, go for it. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. Sure. I heard the screenshot noise. I'm like, uh oh. <laughs> That's See, the new version. Kim will always know if I'm tracking her. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Kim actually has track. What's up? It's amazing that the violets all stayed the same. Yeah. The difference in the prices of them. Yes. Right. Yes. Right. I just think those That's are beautiful. a good point. That's a really good point. You know, Kim, have you thought of doing maybe your watercolor glass technique with this to kind of make it a little bit more ethereal? Um, well, I can't use opaline. Uh, because oh, the stuff yeah. gets fired more than once. Gotcha. Yeah. I mean, so, it could go on on the very last firing. Right. It would have to. Gotcha. It, does it turn just pure? I've never actually worked with it. Yeah. You, it yeah. You, I, you pretty much only get one shot and it turns white. Oh, gosh. Okay. Yeah. That's an expensive white. <laughs> All right. So these were gradients. Mm. So cranberry to orange and cranberry to marigold. Wow. With marzipan <laughs> under it and opaline on top. That's really pretty. These are so pretty. I would wear these as pendants. I think they're just lovely. I was about to say, I would definitely wear those as a pendant. See, bezel set that puppy. You got mm -hmm. jewelry right there. <laughs> <laughs> so, ready? Got the next one. Oh. So this, this has powder on top of the opaline. Right. 
and it starts out heavy and fades away. Wow, so dusty blue, opaline, and then powder. Those are beautiful. I love, you know, when we were talking about doing those, um, the candy jars, was mm -hmm. that last two weeks ago? Mm -hmm. One of my very favorite bases for the tops on those is dusty blue. It's just like, you can yeah. pretty much add any Christmas design on top of dusty blue and it's gonna yeah. look fantastic. <laughs> One of the things I love about Dusty Blue, other than I've got a whole closet full of it, is that it does not react. Mm. Mm. That is nice. It's like you get those colors that there's just not an equivalent bullseye color. It's right. Uh-oh. So these are the, the jellyfish that I did. Um, they're all marzipan on the bottom, except for the blue one, that's Dusty Blue. Okay. So you ready? Yeah. Oh. And then this this was a project specific sample I made myself where I wanted to put powders on top of sheet glass to see if I wanted to do a leaf project, um, melding the sheet glass with the powders in, in a kind of a graphic way. And the project never went anywhere, but it was an interesting exercise. And so I kept the sample. I like, I like that lower green leaf. Mm -hmm. How it has just kind of an outline. Mm -hmm. It was that just from the powder, from applying powder to the top yes. of Yes, yes, oh. yes. So I'm off on a powder adventure now and I'm learning how to blend from, you know, dark heavy powder to nothing um, so that you get a whole range of colors happening, but that's what's going on there, Kat. Ah, it's beautiful. And I think the same with one right above it, you know, just selective, selective gradation. Oh, yikes. There's an insect on the counter. Sorry, hold on. There you go. It's like I have to hold on. I got to retrieve this insect and put him outside. Come on. So everybody's going to make samples, right? Well, I have I to <laughs> Leah shaking her head. After a, after a bazillion years, I'm finally doing samples of just the bullseye colors. Are you? Yeah. Yes. I mean, it's taken me for forever, but you know, at some point you got to do it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So if you want to laugh, um, when I first started out and they told you, you know, take all the colors that you're going to use and put it on a strip of clear and on a strip of white and on a strip of black. Mm -hmm. So being the newbie and following directions, precisely <laughs> i picked out all these wonderful transparent colors and i glued it on the clear and i glued it on the white and i glued it on the black so of course the black ended up with lumps on it right but it's a really good teaching aid you know i always right. show the students see <laughs> don't do this oh my god no I, I think sometimes we take for granted what we just know yeah, like you don't put red on black, right? But <laughs> at one time we did not know that. I know. Mm -hmm. Clearly. <laughs> Clearly. There's almost a pun there. Get it? We're talking about that. <laughs> no. I don't know. I I am guilty of never having made samples of glass. So I need to that'll be part of my new art life as a right. as a mountain artist, right? <laughs> Is there a place in Denver for you to buy glass cat? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. DNL? Oh, that's right. That's right. I knew that. Although, you know, my first experience with DNL is when I when I lived in Denver before. So there's a few. There's one called Glass Warehouse. There was another one called Bella Glass, but I don't know if they actually sell. But my first excursion to to DNL Glass, I went and I bought a bunch of glass. I had my wholesale number and stuff and you know, bought a bunch of bales and things. And the lady just pointed to the carpeted table that was across the room. And she's like, you can wrap there. 
And it was like, what? I have to wrap my own glass? This was such a foreign thing because if, you know, if you've been at Helios all these years, that's part of the extra care that you get when you buy glass from Helios is, you know, Karen would lovingly wrap it up and then she would write something sweet on it, you know, and anyway, it just, I was so horrified. I'm like, I have no idea how to wrap a giant sheet of glass. I don't know what to do with it. So oh. anyway. So, so I ended up not doing a lot of glass when I lived in Denver. Um, plus I was renting. I just didn't tell my landlord that I installed a two, you know, a two forty volt plug in the basement. <laughs> it was kind of a need to know thing and I didn't think they needed to know. So, but, uh, anyway, <laughs> yeah. So anybody working on anything fun? Nobody? Everybody's quiet. What are you working on, Kim? I am doing powder wafers. Oh my gosh, am I doing fun powder wafers? I just love these. I can't believe I never have messed around with powder wafers before. So do you have anything in front of you to show us? I do not, but I will soon. What? Yeah. Okay. It's ancient, ancient secret from Kim. Kim is exploring. <laughs> So, yeah, it's like, yeah, I, I, I feel like a whole new world has opened up because I've just never paid any attention to it. Yeah. I don't know why. Well, and it's funny to watch the process because Kim will snap a picture of something and, and throw it in a group message with Jenny. And she's like, yeah, I don't know how I feel about this. And we're like, oh my God, that's a masterpiece. <laughs> so it's kind of, it's really funny to watch Kimbrel's creative process because, you know, mm. the, it's, it's funny to watch as she's like testing and then all of a sudden she's in love with this new technique and, and who knows, there might be a class come out of it. So, so that's but I'm finding that the technical end of it is really elusive to me and I have to ask for help. Um, like schedules, you know, the fuseglass.org people and Paul and answered a bunch of questions for me this week about, about schedules. And, and I'm learning a little bit about centering. I know we talked about that a little yeah. bit. Um, yes. Does everybody know what centering is? I, I used to. <laughs> <laughs> I only know it in regards to metal. <laughs> Basically, I guess when you've got something that's a powdery substance that once you heat it, it kind of binds together. So um, if you've ever heard of precious metal clay, if you've ever heard of that, so it's basically fine powder of metal and a clay binder that's in a clay. And then when you fire it, it burns off the clay and all of the uh, metal particles center together to make something solid. So if you're doing that or some of the 3D printing uh, techniques that are out there now are, are actually powder. And then a laser might, you know, deposit some glue in there and do a 3D print. And then when they fire it, it centers together. So wow. it's kind of riding the wave of technology. <laughs> oh, so with enamels. Yes. Yeah. Can be with enamels as well. So. So that you can flip them over and put something on top. Yes. Yeah, so it's um, lots of cool stuff. But, and like I said, I used to be afraid of powders, so powders and fritz. If now anybody I'm, knows how I can keep my powder wafers from reacting with something underneath it, I'm all ears, because that's what I'm trying to figure out. Clear confetti. That's my next thing. I've been doing a little layer of white. Yes. And it's not great. It's so when you, when you do the little layer of white, how are you applying the little layer of white? I've tried two things. I've tried putting my stencil down and then putting some dense white on top and then putting my color and firing that. So so is, that is that just powder, Kim, you're doing? Yes. Yes. Okay. And what's your second idea? My, my second one is to build the wafer, flip it upside down, put the white on the back of that and fire that again. And are you again putting sifting powder on there? Yes. Yes. I'm hmm. so I, would white suggest, I would suggest another thing. Uh-huh. So when you make your, your wafer, the edges are going to curl up. 
a little bit. Sometimes I do, yes. So you, and the and in the end result, in this method, you're going to want to use the bottom side as the face side. Okay. Okay. So you make okay. a slurry of white and water and brush it on there. Uh -huh. Level it by spritzing water on it. Uh -huh. Absorb the water. Turn it over now. So what used to be the bottom side is now the top and fuse it to your base. Interesting. So, so this fuses to the base while it's damp? Or are you letting it dry? Yeah. Okay. You, you want to let it dry. Otherwise, when you flip it over, right. the powder will fall off. Right. Right. Okay. And so what consistency is the slurry, Kirsten? Is it like paste or... Um, just so that it moves and okay. you're going to, you're going to apply it with the paintbrush. Okay. And then, you know, spritz it with some more water. So it fills in I the know. entire area uh -huh. and then blot it, flip it and go. And this is on a wafer that's already been fired. Uh -huh. I've only done it on a base layer of, uh, you know, sheet glass. I don't see any reason you could not put it on top of another wafer. Right. Okay. Interesting. And I've only used, I usually make my wafers out of um, white. So I just have the white out and I make the slurry out of white. But I think okay. opaque white is, isn't a. Then I white can react actually, can it? Does opaque white react? I know dense white used to react with I know, but opaque white. But no. does opaque white react? It, I don't think it does. Anybody? What, what number is it? <laughs> is it 113? That's plain white. I have the catalog. <laughs> okay, Stella's looking it up. We're going to get the answer here. Babel, it's what I just bought for you. What number was that? Uh, it's 113. Yes. Oh, sorry. It's white opalescent. Okay, so just plain, um, plain old vanilla white. Plain white. Plain white. Plain white. Plain white. Not vanilla plain white, white, but plain yeah. white. Plain, plain white. white. Plain white. Okay. And I think you could do that. You could use that same white as a slurry on anything because what you want is to to not let the color of the thing underneath it bleed through to the upper right. wafer, correct? Right. right. Exactly. And there you go, know, girlfriend. That'll only be a buck two eighty. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So it's trans transparent white. Kirsten, do you use a little edge of the wafer as a kind of like dam so you don't go over yeah, the Yeah, it kind of forms a little cup. It forms a little yeah. cup that holds, right. yeah. that holds the slurry in place. Did Stella yeah. find it? Stella, you got it? Yeah, so white, which is 0113, is not right. reactive. Okay, there you white, go. And <laughs> okay, white is 013. Actually, zero zero thirteen. That um, is non-reactive. But what is reactive of the whites is translucent white and lacy yep. white. Lacy. Yeah, you don't want those. You want the non-reactive ones. Non-reactive. You want the thirteens, like like the one one three or the zero one three. Yeah. Thanks for looking that up. Yeah, I will That's try that. Person, thank you. Couldn't she use sure. clear also? If you're just making a barrier. Say that again. Clear. Couldn't you make slurry out of a clear powder? I don't know that it would give you the um, effect of not letting the bottom powder, the color from the bottom wafer telegraph through to the upper wafer. 
Okay. Oh. Hey, we could do test tiles. Yeah. Right. <laughs> what a great idea, Kat. I'm I know. That this down. is why you guys keep me around, right? You're like, oh, yeah. Every once in a while, Kat will get one. <laughs> I think that sounds good. Um, oh, and I was going to give you The other thing that's good about that technique is the buying company does not like wafers that curl up because they, f when you rub your hand over the glass, it catches yeah, and it right. feels it's fragile. Hard. So you really yeah. do want to fire it with the curled edges down. down. Right. Well, and now you have something to fill the gap with. Yeah. I, the curling problem that I'm seeing is very inconsistent. And so I'm thinking that it's a fire schedule thing or it's a volume thing or something. Um, but hmm. sometimes I see curls and sometimes I don't. Um, and, and I guess is that is that based on color, Kim? Yeah, I was about to say it that. It could be. It could because be because white white being a stiff glass gives you a lot more of a curl than yeah. you know black or 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 a dark color. Mm. Yeah, well, I would think that it would be the other way around that the softer glasses would move more, and because white is stiff, that it would stay in place. I would think so too. But then, but you know, like for instance, with the lace, with I white like your glasses. What's <laughs> Thank you. I can't see anything about it. Uh, <laughs> um, I with white, you get. I think I get a lot more with white than with other colors. Okay. Ah, interesting. Okay. Okay. But, okay. but I also think it is because you have with white, you have to fire higher. Right. The, the same result. So I don't know if temperature has something to do with it or if it's a combination of temperature and color. Mm. Right. I feel like it could mm. take me months or years to figure it out. <laughs> I was going to show you all something else I learned from enameling. When you were saying blotting it, like make the slurry, put it on there and blot it. Mm -hmm. The other thing that one of my teachers had taught me was to make something like that, like just out of a paper towel. And it just, you barely touch it and it just wicks up all the water out of it. That's known as capillary action. Capillary action, yes. Whoa. <laughs> I know, look at, you know, I was noticing earlier, all of us look very smart in our glasses. <laughs> You notice that? <laughs> well, we had the last one when the screen was filled of people. Every single one had glasses on. I thought we all looked very nice. nice. Yeah, very smart. So, <laughs> like, ah, anyway. But it's who it's, else is working on cool stuff? Well, so, um, Kim, I've been working on, as you know, on one of your, the, um, an idea with the uh, watercolor thing. And I'm hoping for a little uh -huh. design critique from you. Oh. Would you be sure. willing to do that? Absolutely. It'd be my yeah. honor. Should I go get it? Oh, yeah. Yes. All right. right. Oh, yeah. Right back. I, I put the link for the 365 days in the chat. Yes. yes. Thank you. Much. Here's the link to the Facebook, uh, the Facebook link, and then also avocado green was zero two two two. And thank you for that, Stella. That looks awesome. And then Karen, Karen loves opaline on almost anything. <laughs> it makes a great yellow. If you put it over yellow, because we don't have a nice buttery yellow. Yeah, but it works but... wonderful on yellow. Really. Ooh. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. But how do you deal how do you deal with it if seeing you can only have one firing? And well, what I did with the jellyfish was that I put my powders on the marzipan layer and some of those got fired two and three and four times. Yeah. And then so the final one was the opaline. And the final one was on with the opaline on top and there was powder on top of the opaline. And that was the last firing. Gotcha. Okay. That's good to know. Because I love the watercolor washes. Oh, go ahead. 
it gave me beautiful colors and beautiful blends and um, the, the marzipan and the opaline really love each other. Mm. Mm. Good to know. Kirsten, okay, I'm ready. Okay, I'm ready to bear my soul here. Okay, we're ready. Um, I'm, I, I feel like I can be, uh, I can hear pretty honest critique here because my husband went as far as to say he doesn't like anything about this piece. So... <laughs> 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 so I wanted to, and I didn't I didn't fall apart I just kind of heard what he had to say and I think he has some very valid points but I don't think I'm ready to trash the idea so I wanted to make a boat shaped piece that is just the shape of a boat it's not a specific boat Okay. And um, so I kind of wanted to do the watercolor thing because that's watery. And then I was talking about putting um, a quote, a boat quote around the sides. So here's the piece. Oh, oh. oh John, you should hear them. They're going ooh and ah. <laughs> oh, We're like the mermaids. We're all the water girls. So. And then oh. I wrote um yeah a quote around the side and the the i think that the quote really disappears mm. does it looks faint mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. and um i also think that you know when you do these watercolor pieces you get kind of a you don't get a real defined edge right right mm -hmm. Right. So it's not like I can really ridge the boat with gunnels. Right. Mm -hmm. But I do think the writing needs to be on something where it doesn't disappear. I don't yeah. want it to be in my face, but yeah. So yeah. now talk amongst just so it was totally um, pointed at both sides. Right, I remember. <laughs> the shape <laughs> is wonderful. You well, know, you have to have a bow and you should. <laughs> I'm just I want to hear all those comments individually. <laughs> oh my God, I think it's, the colors are stunning. Yeah. First of all, and the layers, yeah. it's so aquatic. We love that. <laughs> it's <you> right there. <laughs> I also think, Kirsten, you have to share that you've been working on this vessel boat idea for a long time. Yeah, I'm a slow, I'm a slow idea developer. Mm -hmm. It is very true. I'm really, I'm slow. And I'm trying to think. Yeah, I'm trying to think on that. So, so you definitely want the text on there. Is that right? I do. Okay. I do. I think I'll say it's it again. Very, without the text, it's just very singularly flat, dimensional, kind of, mm. it's kind of nothing to me. How many times has it been fired? Um, I would say upwards of about nine or 10. Oh. Whoa, really? <laughs> <laughs> the because, you know, there's there's three in just the watercolor technique, right? Right. Blue. And then I and then I was encouraged to cut the transom in the Love back. It. Love it. And then I had to I flat lapped that and gave it a curvature. Nice. And then I needed to fire polish it. <laughs> And then I wrote on the words, and I knew to not do that as a full fuse. So right. that had to go on later. So we're up to about three, four, five. And then it took me about three to get the right mold I, mold shape. So oh maybe God. only eight. Oh, my. <laughs> uh, I don't know any enamel that would stand up to that many oh. times. Right? Yeah. What enamel did you use? Um, it's... I used the Rouge Black, and that's where my entire studio started smelling like um, Christmas baking with the clove oil. 
I know the feeling. <laughs> oh my so, goodness. So Kirst, Kirsten, did the did the Ruche go on and was it was the Ruche added toward the last part of the firings? Yeah. Or okay. Yes, and, just before the slumpings. Okay. Slumpings. So <sighs> plural. Uh, right. Three. Oh. Three three slumpings. Could you could you include the writing on one of the blue transparent or blue pieces? Center it, then cap it with clear in building it up. I don't know. I'm I don't not know. Once, you, once you have kept once you have kept it. You can fire it as many times as you want to. Well, the problem wasn't, isn't that the writing, um, the writing looks as it did when I put it down. I just, I don't think that the pens I use allow for enough enamel to flow through them. Um. So the writing is thicker. And I think the writing gets lost on the watercolor. Right. Yeah. And maybe I, I may have missed this too. Did you, you didn't clear cap over the, the enamel, right? Okay. Is, and here's just one thought I had. In fact, this is why I was asking how many times that you had done it. One was to flatten it one more time, <laughs> basically to flatten it. I use this as a boat anchor before I flattened it one right? more time. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> Go ahead, Kat. Go ahead. No, no. I was thinking I, my, the other possibility I thought was to flatten it and then even sift powders to make like that gun gunnel. Is that the right word? To, mm -hmm. to basically give it that area, you know, firing it one more time and then being able to write on that and then re-slump it. But you've already fired it so many times. I've, you're you're in dangerous one more. Country, right what's, and then, what's, <laughs> what's three more i don't see a problem with it because then i go you know what that would make great jewelry it's cat's solution to everything <laughs> so and blue cells by the way it is the number one seller i had so carol carson <laughs> carol carson likes color line no the, the ones in the little squeeze bottles. Um, yeah, that's color line. Glass line. Glass oh, no, line. that's glass line. Glass line. Thank glass you, line. She likes glass, glass line. line because the black is the blackest black she can get. Really? Um, I don't know what she does to thin it out to get it to go, you know, fluidly through a pen. Um, but I have done some experimenting with that, and it's a very nice black. The amount that comes through that... The res of that oh, little no. pen reservoir. What oh, no. is it? One with the same kind of pen that you're using with a wide opening. There are two sizes. I use the bigger one. Okay. Mm. And you open it further somehow. I was gonna say, is it clean? Is the pen act? Is the nib clean? Did you mm -hmm. lick it? <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> Don't lick it. Oh, wait, we're recording. I'm wondering, um, I've seen someone else uses squeeze bottles with little nibs, um, metal tips. And I'm going to try that to see if they come in a larger hole opening size. But, I mean, it's going to have to be pretty big to read it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Something something like this. That's exactly it, what I'm talking about, girly. Okay. It's okay. This is Hobby Lobby. A dollar and a half for two. Have okay. you tried it yet? I use it with uh hairspray. Hairspray. You haven't tried it with enamel? Like this. Not like this. Oh <laughs> Yes, have you it tried would feel it well. That way I Did use you? less less hairspray so I don't have a danger of, um, you know, 
get in its body. Well, so, but have you used it with enamel? Kirsten, when we did the thing about glue a few months ago, mm -hmm. I bought some of those squeeze bottles with the little nozzles and those did come in different sizes. Mm -hmm. So refer oh. back to that. Um, I'm pretty sure there is a link to a PDF somewhere on that. Um, I will see if I can find that. Kirsten, okay. we bought those. We bought those. You should have some. We bought those squeeze bottles. And one of the things that I purchased while I was getting ready for that was a henna kit. So if you're going to go searching for little tips and bottles, check out the henna application use because those were pretty um, similar, but you know, a little different. So tell me, um, is that is that are notes from that one already posted on our? I think they are. Place? Okay. Because I think I think it has to do with the amount that comes through the nib, but right. okay. So that's that's a te a technique question. Tell me oh. because I purchased the I own the design thing. What are your comments about just this idea? I like the idea. Um, I think I think it's an execution problem. I do like the idea. Um, I like Kat's idea about building yourself a, a little rim or a border somehow to put your copy on. However, if, you're, if your letters are a little bigger and a little fatter, you might not need that. Yeah, and, um, kind of contrast. Uh-huh, uh-huh. And let me tell you one problem that I had in trying to write with a squeeze bottle is it's really hard to keep your pressure consistent and your line quality changes as you write, or at least it did for me. Mm -hmm. Okay. I like those, that, that little pen where you put the dropper in and, and you let it go because you get a very consistent line. It's just a very thin line. Mm. Okay. Because I looked so much, you know, with the tutorial you did about you using that, and I, you know, I thought, okay, is this milk? I even got out milk to see if my ink <laughs> was comparable to What to percentage milk. milk fat was it? It was whole, whole milk. Is it chocolate? <laughs> no, it was not chocolate. And it, it felt like you were getting more out of the um, stylus. That's not quite the right yeah. word, but then I was, but mm. anyway. I feel like I can say that they had trouble finding the right consistency. Okay. And, and the only thing I have to offer you is, is to play with it. And, you know, that, that's not very helpful. But. No, that's good. That's really helpful. You think that, do you think the idea is um, worth going forward with? <laughs> I like the idea a lot. I like your colors a lot. Uh, the colors. It, I think he was right about taking off the points. Yeah. John, you got a vote. <laughs> yeah. the, the points made it look like a football and, and it felt yeah. a little rough and jaggy to me. And I think the, the softer okay. curve worked better. I think they're more suggestive okay. of the boat. Okay. Yeah. I think the is fantastic. To work, babe. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, don't don't give up on it. Even if you have to start all over again, don't give up on it. Yeah. Well, this, this one's done after that many firings, but okay. So um, here's here's an idea. You make it really small so your lines appear bigger. <laughs> <laughs> Could I sell a magnifying glass with it? <laughs> it's a, it's a the thing I learned from Karen. She said, "I meant to do that. You just have to." <laughs> I meant to do that. I meant to do that. I'm going to write that down. <laughs> I might put that as a big quote in my studio. That could be the name of the piece. I meant to do that. Yeah. Always good. Oh, Thank oh, you, guys. Oh, Thank you very much. Also, also, what's that? If you're going to keep doing this, there was a woman who took the class and she did those similar colors, but instead of doing squares, she did wavy stripes. Oh, Ooh, I like that idea. Yeah. yeah. Ooh. Very watery. 
Holy smokes. <laughs> right? <laughs> that is she did that first one out of the barrel? I'm not sure about that. And she might be in the Facebook group. She might have posted. Okay. I, I will check. But same technique, whole different look. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Thank, thank you very much, all of you. Um, that that's I like the idea of the Holly Lobby things, the glue squeeze bottles. I meant to do that. Oh, yes. And, um, you know, maybe I, I'm not really sure yet how to apply maybe like an opal around the side. I don't know. I don't know how that works yet. Yeah. Because I know, think on mine, when I was saying if you if you were to put some sort of opal around that edge, even if it's like a thick layer of powder or something, you'd have to full fuse it to get it smooth enough to write on. Mm -hmm. Right. On it, so. Mm -hmm. And then I think, you know, because you've kind of got this kind of edge, you know, a cut line is going to look wow. stupid. And then unless it kind of replicates that line, it's, I don't okay. think, that, I don't know. Somewhat kind of weird. And okay. as you're firing it, because it's spreading and spreading and spreading, it's really hard to define that line and keep it in place and and manage it throughout all the different firings. Exactly. Yes. I knew you would understand that because this is all about you. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, a monster. Oh. <laughs> I used I used to actually, when I had pendants that didn't quite turn out as elaborate as I would like, I would actually take that same enamel and I would go in an accent and make like ladybugs on there. <laughs> 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 Nobody's going to buy this hideous piece of jewelry. So I would just, you know, and I, I had one where I had taken, it was strips of French vanilla and I had cut it into these little bitty bits. And when I fired them, they looked like pill bugs almost, except for they were like, <laughs> white pill bugs so i would take you know the enamel and i would put like little antennas on and little smiley faces it's just i don't know i thought it was funny nobody ever bought them but <laughs> <laughs> but you know you go through these phases with this idea like oh i think i've got an idea i'm gonna try it yeah i can see this in my mind this sure. is gonna be pretty stinking good oh well there's a surprise right <laughs> Yeah, I, mean, I called them the happy bugs. Phase. Yeah, I went through oh, my, my happy God. bugs phase, happy pill bug phase. We, if you oh, find pill bugs as you're getting ready to move, call me. I'll come and relieve relieve you of them. Why do you want pill bugs? Yes. Oh my God. <laughs> okay. 